Today I'm showing how to change your car's coolant fluid, no matter what car you have. I'm using as the example a Citroen C1 engine coolant flush. Although small, it's a good example vehicle because it's very typical of how to change coolant in any car. I'll cover common questions I see on forums and search engines, such as why you need to change your car's coolant, how often should you change the coolant in your vehicle, and more. I'm going to be doing this very thoroughly. So let's get right to it. Safely raise the front of your car, and if it's been used, allow it to cool, so you won't burn or scald yourself. Gather your tools and equipment, especially a large container, to catch the old draining coolant from the engine. You might also need to remove any under tray that's fitted to your car. There isn't one on this C1. Find the drain points for your car. Most have a drain point on the block, and many have a drain cock along the bottom of the radiator. Although again, this C1 doesn't have one. Take the radiator or reservoir cap off, and drain the block first if the drain points downwards. On this C1, the block drain is at the bottom of the water pump, just behind the air conditioning compressor, and you'll need a 14 millimeter socket. Remove the drain plug and allow the coolant to drain. Temporarily close the uh, drain cock for the block, then drain the radiator from its drain cock if it has one, or by removing the bottom hose if it doesn't. Squeeze and pull back the clip, and pull the hose off. Do your best to make sure that you catch all of the old coolant in your container. Try not to let any land on the ground because it's dangerous to small animals. I'm being especially careful here because we have a particularly lively population of hedgehogs. This is a good point to address the question, does coolant really need to be changed? I'm carefully choosing to call this stuff coolant and not just antifreeze because there is a little bit more to it than just that. Coolant has two primary functions. The ethylene glycol content in the coolant prevents the coolant mixture from freezing solid during the winter. An anti-corrosion package of chemicals, rather unsurprisingly, prevents corrosion internally within the cooling system. However, just like wet central heating systems in your house, over time the corrosion protection package gets used up and there comes a point where it can no longer protect against corrosion. And once depleted, corrosion sets in quite quickly and corrosion products are insoluble and they build up and block fine waterways. Heater matrix and radiator being the two favourites. Preventing this corrosion buildup is the main reason for needing to change the coolant. So how often should you change coolant in your car? It depends on the type of coolant that's in your car. Old type silicate antifreeze was good for two years and most OAT type coolants on general sale today have a coolant service interval of five years. There are coolants good for 10 years, but these tend to be used for factory fill rather than being available on general sale. So check what type of coolant your car has and change accordingly with the same type. If there's any cause for doubt and the coolant is red or pink, it's probably five year coolant, OAT. And if it's blue or green, then assume it's a two year coolant. People ask, what happens if you never change your coolant? Once corrosion starts to set in, you are heading for high maintenance bills. The radiator or heater matrix may well spring a leak due to internal corrosion, or the buildup of solids may cause a restriction, which in turn may cause overheating. A leak can cause overheating as well, of course, and overheating can lead to serious engine damage. So a coolant change really is worthwhile. The next step in this process I'm going to show you how to flush your engine coolant. You might ask, is coolant flush necessary? I've drained it, why not just refill with new coolant? There are three reasons mainly. One, you probably haven't drained the system completely. There'll be at least some left in there, especially in the heater core. Corrosion and scale sediments may well have got left behind in the system. Again, especially in the heater core and probably the radiator. And if you just refill it at this point, you won't be refilling with a full strength mixture because there was some left there, which reduces its life. So if you're only filling up 80%, you're only gonna get a four year life. This C1 is actually an excellent example of how you might not have drained all the coolant out of the system. Because although I've drained the coolant at the two points given in the workshop manual, the expansion tank has not been drained and is still full of old coolant. And there are no instructions in the workshop manual for how to drain the expansion tank in particular. So what I'm going to do in this instance is remove this overflow hose, which is connected between the top of the radiator where the cap goes 
and the bottom of the expansion tank, unclip it, which fortunately is easy enough to access, and then I'm going to pull it down from underneath and drain it into my container that way. And whilst I've got that little pipe pointing down into my drain container, I'm going to use my hose pipe to flush some water through. Don't forget to retrieve your hose back to the top and reconnect it to the uh, radiator overflow. And position it back into its clips. And using an old piece of coolant hose from the garage that I've attached to the bottom radiator outlet, I'm going to flush the radiator from the top here. It's also wise to disconnect the hoses from the in and out on your heater matrix and give your heater matrix a flush. I'm going to disconnect the hoses at the block because on this car they're much easier to get to by doing that. But the reason for that is because most cars have the in and out connections of the heater matrix on the top of the heater matrix. Unless you absolutely know the connections are on the bottom, you probably haven't drained it fully which is also another reason why sediment and corrosion product can settle in there and we want to make sure that we've got that out. Whilst I've got a tub full of old coolant and water that's been used to flush the system through, let's address the issue of how to dispose of old coolant. Now, regulations will differ in various parts of the world. Similarly, so will the facilities. You may well have somewhere close to you that will accept old coolant and take it away for recycling. If you have, take it there. A local garage may accept it from you and add it to their stockpile, but that's unlikely, particularly here in the UK, because most garages have to pay to have their old oil and coolant taken away. They're not going to let you add to that because that's going to cost them. Whatever else you do, do not pour it or allow it to run down a land drain. Again, this may vary around the world, but certainly here in the UK, surface drains on the side of the road go straight into streams and rivers. That's where our rainwater goes. The next best thing to do is take it inside the house and pour it down the toilet and flush it away. Now our downstairs toilet just happens to be the other side of this wall and we have an inspection pit here so I don't have to take the coolant into the house, I can dispose of it straight into the sewer. This coolant poured into here will go with the sewage to the sewage works where it will be treated. And the sewage works are quite capable of handling small DIY quantities of old coolant. I have had people on previous videos argue with me about this point but I did get this advice from Seven Trent Water. But to those people who want to argue about it, if you've got a better suggestion, let's hear it, because so far, I haven't. And once you've poured it away down the toilet, give the toilet a flush. I'm just gonna run some water down the sewer with the hose. I've disconnected the pipes to the heater matrix. To one of the pipes, I've connected a small length of hose, which goes down into my uh, retrieval container and I'm going to send some water through using my uh, hose pipe nozzle from the other one. And sure enough, that brought a load more old coolant and antifreeze out of the heater matrix. So I'm going to flush it a little bit more in the same direction, and then I'm going to flush it in the opposite direction. When you're doing this, make sure that your heater control is on full hot. Most heater matrixes in most cars these days are full flow matrices, but uh, you just never know. Some might have a uh, restriction valve in them. And sure enough, despite the fact that this coolant flush is not overdue, flushing the heater matrix has brought a whole load of scale deposits out and flush in the opposite direction. Try to use the full force of your hose as well if you can. Having given the system a good flush at every point, I could just refill it with fresh coolant mixture at this point. However, because I've seen evidence of scale removal, particularly from the heater matrix, which is the most vulnerable part, I'm going to treat the system now with a proprietary coolant system cleaner. I'm using this Winds radiator flush. One bottle of this is supposed to be good for 12 litres. The cooling system in this car is 4 litres but I'm going to use the whole bottle so that I'm effectively getting a triple concentrate dose. Making sure that you've replaced all your hoses, put back all your clips, closed all your drain cocks, any hose clips that are suspect, replace them. First of all, I'm going to pour the cleaner into the top of the radiator to make sure that I get uh, all of it in and then gently fill with water. I'm filling with tap water for the cleaning process, but when I do the final fill with uh, coolant, I'll use deionized water. When you think you've got it nearly full, give some of the hoses a, a vigorous squeeze to see if you can push any air out. And if you hear any air gurgling out, wait until that finishes and then uh, fill some more. It's quite possible you might have an airlock in the heater matrix, 
although it's probable that you left it virtually full of water anyway after flushing. Also make sure that the coolant reservoir is full to the fill line and leaving the radiator cap off, start the engine. Just top it up gently. Inside the car, leave the heater control on full hot and the fan turned off. Also keep an eye on the water level and just top up gently if it goes down. I would expect it to go down a little. There's, there's minor little air bubbles and air pockets come out of the coolant system. But before it gets hot enough for the thermostat to open, replace the radiator pressure cap. If you've got a diesel engine or a small capacity engine like this one, it's quite possible that uh, you could run it at idle with the bonnet up forever and it would never open the thermostat. So as long as you're confident you've got enough coolant in the system, you could take it for a short run. Don't go too far. Don't want to leave yourself stranded. Now the instructions on the bottle for this say to let the engine idle for 10 minutes once it's hot. But my wife is going out to see her mother tonight, which is a round trip of around 30 miles and about half an hour's running. So I'm going to stop the engine now, let it cool, check the level. So I'm going to let my wife go out in it tonight with the cleaning solution in the, in the engine. And we'll come back to it tomorrow to do another flush and to refill with the coolant. So here we are on the next day. The car's done about 30 miles since I filled it with cleaner and water. So repeat everything that we saw earlier in the video, or that for me was yesterday, drain and flush with fresh water. Before we go to the final fill of coolant though, a couple of top tips. Do make sure to flush through. Don't just drain the cleaner out, do flush it out. Make sure that the coolant system is completely drained as much as you can from all drain cocks on the block and the radiator. For the heater matrix in particular, when we refill the coolant system, we're going to be refilling with concentrate antifreeze and deionized water. But for the heater matrix, at the moment, it's full of tap water because I've just flushed it through. Put your drain hose in one side of the heater matrix and a fill hose with a funnel on the other and gently pour about a litre of deionized water into the matrix so that it displaces the tap water. If you're using a ready mix coolant, pour some of your ready mix through until you see it coming out of the drain hose. Now reconnect all your hoses, make sure all your drain cocks are closed. And if like on this Citroen C1, the drain for the block is a removable plug, make sure to replace the copper washer that goes on it. Also, if you have any suspicion over the operational capability of the engine thermostat or the water pump, now is the time to replace either of them or both if you feel the need. If you feel they're working fine, leave them. But do replace the radiator cap with a new one. Over time, these do have a tendency to lose their capability of holding pressure. I did a short video about that. And you can have them tested, but for what they cost to buy one, it's not worth having it tested. It's cheaper just to buy one and replace it than it is to have it tested. In case any of you are wondering about the value of going to all this trouble, and, and it does seem like a lot of trouble, and it is quite a, a drawn out piece of work, although it's not at all difficult. Here's a picture of the cleaner and water that I drained out of the heater matrix just a few moments ago. As you can see, it's brought out even more scale particles. So what we're doing now is allowing the cooling system to start off with the best possible cleanliness for the next five years. It's time to refill the system with fresh coolant. Now I prefer to use concentrated coolant and deionized water. Do use deionized water, don't use tap water. Depending on where you live, the tap water may be quite hard and may contain dissolved minerals, all of which come out of scale inside the system and reduce cooling efficiency. Alternatively, you can buy coolant ready mix, in which case the manufacturer will have ready mixed it with deionized water. For this C1, I'm using this super long life concentrate antifreeze and coolant. It's a five year life OAT coolant. The two main types of coolant are silicate coolants, which is the old style, which has a two year life, and they tend to be green or blue. And more modern OAT coolants, which usually have a five year life, and they are usually colored either red, pink, or orange. I have seen coolants in purple, uh, but sometimes they are five year life, and sometimes they are super long 10 year life coolants. 
10 year life coolants are very expensive and as a result of that they tend to be mostly used by the manufacturers for the factory fill. Choose your type of coolant according to the car you've got. Most cars built certainly from the mid 90s onwards will use OAT and, then, and most cars that are significantly older than that will almost certainly want silicate. Um, you probably can use OAT in older cars and classics but check what metals are in the cooling system and whether it's truly compatible. That brings us on to one of the main reasons why we've given this coolant system such a thorough flushing and cleaning. Whatever else you do, do not mix coolant types. There is a third type of coolant which is used in General Motors GM based cars which is called by the trade name of Dexcool. Now if you have a GM based car that was filled with Dexcool at the factory then do not mix any other type of coolant with Dexcool. That is if your car still has the original Dexcool in it. If the system has been thoroughly drained and flushed and has had something else put in it, use that something else type again. If it's had OAT put in, use OAT for top up or change. Make sure that you are not mixing Dexcool with OAT. What happens if you mix coolant types? Some OATs and Dexcool, when they mix, they form a gel. You can also get the same effect if you mix OAT with older type of silicate. And if they do react and form a gel, that prevents the coolant from being pumped around the system properly blocks small waterways and will lead to an engine wreck. That's another reason why if you have got a GM based car, it's particularly important to give your cooling system a very thorough flushing and cleaning out before putting fresh coolant in at the five yearly coolant change interval. You don't want there to be any dex cool remaining in the system or you don't want to have any risk that you're mixing. So here we are, everything's been flushed, cleaned, the heater matrix primed with deionized water in this case, but the system is otherwise empty. Find out how much coolant your system holds. In the case of this C1, it's four liters. This is the one liter three cylinder petrol Toyota engine, designation one KR. Most cars are designed to be filled with a 50-50 mixture of coolant and water. If you buy it ready mixed, it comes ready mixed at 50-50. So I'm gonna put two liters of concentrate in, which is half of the coolant capacity. Pour it in gently. Remember, you're pouring it into a closed system. So if you try to pour it in too fast, you might get blowback from air that's trying to escape back out of the system. And that might cause you to lose and spill some of this valuable coolant that you spent money on. It's expensive stuff, plus the environmental consideration. If, as is the case with this C1, the expansion tank is not part of the coolant circuit, then mix up about a litre at 50-50, just, just for putting in the reservoir. In this case, though, I'm only filling the reservoir to about halfway between the min and the max marks. I can adjust it later. And once you've poured in all of the required concentrated coolant, fill the system the rest of the way with deionized water. Put the cap on, give your hoses a squeeze. You'll probably hear some gurgling as air bubbles pass around the system. Take your cap back off, top it up again, and repeat that process two or three times. And then like we did before, with the cap off, start your car. And again, just like before, Chances are that once the water pump starts to circulate the coolant, it'll push some air bubbles out. I'll just top up as necessary. Don't forget to keep your cabin heat control on maximum. And once it seems that there's no more air coming through, put your cap back on. An aid to helping you know if you've put enough in the system is to remember how much you've put in. I've put in two litres of coolant concentrate, about two litres from a fresh bottle of deionized water. So I've put in four litres into a four litre system, approximately. I've left the reservoir halfway between max and min, take the car for a run, get it up to normal operating temperature, do about four or five miles, come back, let the car cool and check the levels, and then top up as necessary. Keep an eye on it over the next few days that you're using it, so that you're satisfied that you've uh, not left any air bubbles in it. And after that, you're good to go for the next five years. Job, job. <laughs>